Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 12 of Beginner Web Design. In this episode, we're going to do another conversion from Photoshop to CSS, just like in episode 9, I believe. Um, but in this one, I'm not actually going to be creating it in Photoshop with you, just because it's a really simple theme. It's just some text on top of some colors. The reason why I wanted to show you this is because in the last episode, we went over floats, and floats are just so important that I thought they needed their own little episode to really show you all about them. So in this theme right here, there's a ton of areas where we're going to be using floats, and I'll show you them in just a bit. So I'm going to try to go by this pretty quickly just because um, it can get pretty lengthy if I try to explain everything. But um, let's just start this and I'm going to create sections for each one of these little areas in HTML. So for this top area, the dark black uh, background where the find out more by calling this number is, I'm going to use a div with an ID of phone bar. And then we have the logo with the navigation, and I'm going to use a header for that. And then we have this important paragraph here and a, a puppy. So I'm going to use a div ID important. Kind of messing up my, my uh, HTML here. Okay, and now let's go on to this area here where we have three the three paragraphs, and I'm going to call that more info. So div ID more info, and the last one is just the copyright info. So I'll just type in a footer for that, and let's see what else we should do. So the first thing is uh, I'm going to go into my CSS CSS actually, and just declare a few things for the body. The first thing is obviously margin zero. And I want to set the font. So I'm using Georgia as always. Just love that font. And I'll set it to fall back to Times New Roman. And then Times. And then Serif, just the same font stack we've been using. And for the first section up here for phone bar, um, I'll type in this text over here. Okay, find out more by calling that number. And so in phone bar, I'm going to declare, uh, we'll first set the background color. So I'll go into Photoshop here and grab this color. <clears throat> and the font size is 12 pixels. And I'll take this color. And it has a bit of padding, as you could see, on the top and the bottom here. So I'll say uh, padding maybe uh, 8 pixels will do. So I'm going to give it 8 pixels on the top and the bottom, and 0 on the left and the right, because the left and the right don't need it because the entire site is going to be centered. So if we preview this, we get the general effect here. And the only other thing is to center this. So first, I'm going to set text align right just because the text is on the right. And there we go. Now we want to have a wrapper in here that uh, makes the entire website centered as we've done before. But here's a little bit of a problem. If just say we wrap the entire body in a wrapper like we have before, And then if we set wrapper to maybe width uh, 960 pixels, which is an average width for a site, and margin zero auto. Here's the problem. You can see that now the background colors for that element get cut off because now that's sticking within the 960 pixels as well. But I don't want that. I only want the text and the inner content 
to be within that 960 pixels. So to solve that, instead of putting the entire website in that wrapper, I'm only going to put in inside each of these elements. Just like that. Now if we preview it, you can see that the uh, background color now goes all the way to the sides of the page. However, the text itself stays to that 960 pixels in the center. So I'm just going to copy that div class wrapper and paste it to every one of these uh, elements here because we're going to need that again. Okay, so that's done. And the next thing we have to do is I'm actually going to just grab my wrapper and just put it up here just so I don't bother it again. The next part is the important. So I'll go ahead and uh, actually go into my HTML first. And I'm going to use an H1 for the logo. And for the uh, navigation, I'm going to wrap that in a nav element because it is navigation and nav stands for navigation. <laughs> And uh, inside nav, I'm going to use another list because like we've mentioned before, lists are really great for navigation since they just let you add or remove links at any time. So I'll just make a quick little unordered list with home, about, products, and contact. And that's about right. So if we preview this, it's obviously not exactly what we want. So before we get the header on the left and the nav on the right, I'm going to set a few different options here. So first of all, uh, we have to declare the background color for the header. So I'll go ahead and grab that. And inside the H1, and if you noticed, I just uh, indented this here. And I just like to do that to show that H1 is inside header. You don't have to do that. CSS is just very, uh, it has a lot of freedom with uh, white space and how you can format your text. So in H1 here, I'm first going to set the font weight to normal because on default, H1s have, have a bold effect to them. I'm also going to set this to 34 pixels and this color here. If we preview that, that's looking good. I'm also going to get rid of this margin top because it's causing this gap here. So I'll actually just cancel out, cancel out all margins because I don't really need them on this element. There we go. Uh, let's see. Uh, UL also has margin on it, so I'm going to get rid of that. And now I want to start actually positioning them. So the first thing I want to do is set H1 to float left. And I'm going to set the nav to float right. And the reason why I'm setting the nav to float right is because if you set the parent element to float, then the elements inside of it won't get rearranged, even though they're floating to the right. So uh, let's go into our li, and we'll set the list style type to none, float that to the left, and uh, <clears throat> give it a little margin left just to separate them out. I won't do margin right because that's going to cause a little bit of a gap between the li and the right side of the page. So I'll say margin left uh, 25 pixels. Preview that. It's looking good. Let's see. This is bold, 14 pixels in this color. So font weight bold, font size 14 pixels, color that. And that's looking good as well. The next thing to do is to go into our header and uh, well, before we go into our header, actually, 
We do have to add that div class clear because uh, we have those floated elements. So I'm going to add this right before the end of the wrapper. And then I'm just going to style and say over here dot clear. Clear both. There we go. And let's add that padding to the header. Uh, as you can see, I'm just entering pretty much random values because it doesn't really matter when you're designing, usually, as I mentioned before. As long as it looks good, it's fine. So uh, that that's about right. That looks pretty nice. Uh, maybe just a little bit more. So I'll make it uh, maybe 18 pixels. Looks a little bit better. And now I'm going to... I'm just going to apply a margin top to these LIs just to get them centered. Let's try 10. It's almost there. Let's make it a uh, 12 actually. That looks good. Okay. So the header is finished. And now let's move on to the important section here. And I'm going to use an H1 again for this because uh, it has pretty much the same attributes. So I'm just going to import an h1, and this is cool. Then I'll set a paragraph here. And uh, I'm just going to try to grab this text here. Plug that in. And uh, the image, too. So I'll say image, uh, alt is dog and the source is this <clears throat> let me just grab the width and height of this it's uh, 314 by 276 if you're wondering why I keep using that place dog it's because it actually lets you um, just have a, uh, a random generated dog picture so you can just enter any width and any height after the URL so you can say placedog.com slash I don't know 800 slash 390 and it'll generate an image that's 800 pixels wide and 390 pixels tall so it's pretty cool and uh, it, it's very nice to use it also has this little link here you can use place kitten if you'd like so it, it's pretty nice if you ever need just a quick little image, that's really great just to uh, envision what it would look like. So the next thing to do is I'm actually going to put my H1 and my P into one element that will float to the left and then the image will float to the right. So I'm going to use div ID left and take these and indent them and then close off the div. So go into my style here, and let's just start with left. So obviously it's going to be floated to the left, and also give that a width. So let me just see how wide this paragraph here. It's about 240 pixels, and if we preview that, uh, I don't think I was right about that. 240 pixels. <laughs> Uh, oh, that's actually 510 pixels. I completely read that wrong. <laughs> Let me just make that 510. And now you can see we get that there. Uh, the next thing to do is actually go into my H1 here. So I'll type a left H1 and set that to float none because that has the float that the header did. And there we go. And the next thing is to float the image as well. But I'm going to float that to the right, of course. There we go. And let's see what else we should do here. So let's go into my important div and give it some padding. Let's try 25 pixels. Looks about good, I would say. Uh, never mind, a little bit more. Make it 40 pixels. Uh, let's see how that looks. That's about good. I like that. So uh, let's just start styling up my paragraph here. 
So I'll go into here and use the P tag. And P is going to have its 14 pixels. It's this color. And it has a line height of 30 pixels. So font size, 14 pixels, line height, 30 pixels, color that. If we preview that, that looks about good. The little doggy over there, we have kind of like two borders on him. We have the white area around him and then this light gray area. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to set the background color to white and then give him a bit of padding, maybe uh, 10 pixels. And then I'm going to put the border on. And let me just figure out what color that border is. There we go. One pixel solid. That. If we preview that, oops, I added that to the paragraph. <laughs> Let me put that on the image. There we go. That's absolutely perfect. And uh, the next thing we have to do is add in that div class clear. Uh, even though we really didn't notice it, we still know that we had those floated elements, so we're going to need it when we go on to the next element here. More info is kind of easy, and uh, I just realized I'll just do one thing. All of these elements here have padding on the left and the right. Uh, I might as well just go in here and just say only on the top and bottom, because that's only where I need them. Okay. Now the more info just has three columns with three headers and three paragraphs. So I'm going to say div class column. I'll just call it col for short. And I'll say h1. Uh, what does that say? Another header. And I'll create a p and copy this here and paste this in here. And I'm just going to copy this entire call three times because I have three columns. And now I can go in here and I'll call in more info. I think that's what I called it, right? Yep. And I'll give that a background color, whatever this is. And uh, oops, reassign that. And the padding is about. I guess it's about the same as the header. And the header was 18, so let's set that to maybe 20 pixels, zero. Okay, looks about good. Maybe a little bit too much padding. Let's set it to 15 pixels. Okay, uh, also, I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna make these H2s. I don't know why I made them H1s in the beginning. Just copy this all, paste it. Okay. Now each of these calls have to be floated to the left, and I'm going to give them a width. So uh, 960 pixels, I'm actually going to divide that by 3, and I get 320 pixels. So I'm going to make it 300 pixels wide with a margin right of 20 pixels. This way we still have a little bit of breathing room in between each one. There we go, that looks fine. Uh, before we go on, let's just add in our div class clear. And let's also go into our, uh, not into our call, but into our h2. And we have to set a few things here. The h2 is this color, it's 24 pixels and it's not bold. Font size, 24 pixels. Font weight, normal. Color, that. That looks pretty good. And uh, the paragraphs, I remember I made them pretty much the same. So the paragraphs are good down there. Uh, I want to increase the margins between these. Because I think they're a little bit close. So I'll just make this may maybe uh, 280 pixels wide, and then I can actually increase the margin right to 40 pixels. That looks a little bit better, I'll leave it like that. Uh, if you really want to, you can give this last 
column here a specific class or an ID and then get rid of its margin right uh, because it is a little bit off here uh, but right now it looks pretty good I think I, I don't think it we really have to worry about that because there's an image up here so it doesn't really look that bad bad I'll just leave it like that the last part is the footer so I'm going to type in this here copyright some company first and before we go on I should mention that any special characters pretty much anything that's not alphanumeric uh, or regular punctu punctuation really needs to be uh, encoded with the HTML character entity and you can google those and uh, it's basically just a little tiny piece of code that stands for each s special character and uh, the reason why you have to do that is some fonts won't display them, some systems won't display them, things like that. So just for compatibility, you should always put in the HTML character entity. In this example for the copyright symbol, it is an ampersand, the word copy, and a semicolon, and that will generate the copyright symbol and make sure that everyone can see it. And next, I'm actually going to use a span here and include contact at example.com and I'll just float that to the right so let's go in here to our footer and I'll say uh, the background color is this and I also have to say that the color of all the text in there is this color here and it's also 12 pixels so that and font size 12 pixels and then I'll use footer span float right and that's pretty good let's just add some padding onto that footer I'll keep it the same as the uh, phone bar because it's about the same anyway 8 pixels 0 Uh, I take that back. Let's just make it uh, 15 pixels. Might look a little bit better. Yep, there we go. Much better. And that's pretty much it. You can see that now we have the entire theme that pretty much matches the Photoshop file here. You could go in here and just make really specific adjustments if you wanted to. Like, for example, uh, this uh, this entire important area has a little bit less padding than in the Photoshop file. But I think I like it like this. But if you really want to get it exact, you know, you, you can. You can just go ahead and keep editing them until you get exactly what you want. It's all up to you. But uh, this is pretty simple how you can just go right from Photoshop into CSS again. And I hope you've learned a little bit about uh, floats and things like that. And I'll see you in the next episode.